Hello, right, so for this uh, video we're going to look at the urban world as part of the GCC AQA and the part we're looking at today is looking at our case study Bristol and dealing with part 3C which is the impact of urban sprawl on the rural urban fringe so this bit here so when we open up the resources on this the key to this is, is um, as we've got to look at the impact of urban sprawl, the most likely type of question will be explaining that impact. So in terms of exam mark schemes, that's what you need to be thinking about. So to get level two, you need a developed explanation. Or in other words, be able to name a couple of the impacts at the minimum and be able to clearly explain why they are impacts and explain the link between what the point you're making and how it is and creates an impact and this is mainly negative so the impact of urban sprawl on the rural urban fringe and the growth of commuter settlements so we'll deal with urban sprawl first on the rural urban fringe so the first thing we need to be clear on is what urban sprawl is and then also what the rural urban fringe is just incidentally on this as well they might well give you a photograph of somewhere you haven't studied and ask you for the impact of urban sprawl using the photograph. If it does that, you've got to explicitly use the photograph. State things like in the bottom left hand corner of the photograph, I can see the impact would be and so on. <coughs> so urban sprawl, like it says there, the uncontrolled growth of towns and cities encroaching on the rural greenfield sites. Now, if you remember a greenfield site, is an area which has never been built on before. So we're really talking about farms, fields, and so on, as opposed to a brownfield site, which has been used before and it's repurposed. So that might be a little bit like um, taking a, a, an old hospital and converting it into flats. So you're reusing a building. Sometimes you may knock the building down and rebuild. You should have already looked at by this point, the good and the bad of using these two. Generally, the brownfield sites avoid as building on uh, rural areas and the greenfield sites but unfortunately the brownfield sites are limited and they've also in terms of the number of them in most cities but also you've got problems with the um you haven't got enough of them particularly in bristol there is not enough brownfield sites to fulfill all the housing needs which is forcing us onto um, greenfield sites and hence urban sprawl which is this growth of towns and cities and just another definition so we're clear about this because it's on the spec, the rural urban fringe. So like it says there, that's essentially the edge of an urban area where you're starting to change into the countryside or the rural areas. So you tend to get kind of a mix of urban and rural land uses from stables to the old house. And the further out of the city you go, the more rural it becomes. All right, to begin with, there's a starter question here and it's really important you read this because it sets the scene for Bristol because in any question within the case study you always have to be specific to this actual case study in this case is Bristol so with all your answers if you ask for a case study or using a case study you've got to directly refer to Bristol your answer cannot be about any city it can't be too general so one of the key problems in Bristol is a housing shortage but these articles um, give you some figures on that and tell you a little bit more about Bristol itself because these are specifically about Bristol. So this is a think tank, a set of experts thinking through some of the problems of uh, the Greenbelt in Bristol. And by, they've calculated that they think about 4,300 houses could be built on brownfield sites, but they want to build 85,000 homes over the next 20 years. So clearly there's a huge gap so what it's claiming here is the only option is is to build on the greenfield sites but you know that has lots of disadvantages and will cause urban sprawl and that's the background to bristol they need more houses than the brownfield sites can offer so they're going to need to build out on the countryside around them so i would have a read at that and later on think about whether you agree with those but also you could grab some of those figures from these articles to explain your points later so going back to this, if we're going to explain the impact, a really good starting point 
is uh, looking at page 181 of your textbook. So if we just go to the Oxford textbook on page 181, we've got a little bit here, just uh, see if I can circle it. No, I can't. Here where the mouse pointer is, looking at um, how this is about commuter settlements and a little bit further down, how we've got a housing shortage. And then it looks at um, Bradley Stoke and actually having to build on the green belt. So all this area on the map here is either green belt or green field. Obviously, we've got a motorway running through it. And this is the areas where the, um, the urban sprawl is occurring. So if we, and then the, one of the best ways of dealing with this topic, if we just sit back to the Google Doc, is if you use Stoke Gifford and the Defence Procurement Agency, which you've looked at before, which is in your textbook as well, to demonstrate um, the impact these things will have on the Greenfield site. And you could largely base it on these bullet points here. So if, you, if we're just reading through this, the basic idea is that um, they're going to build, like it says there, include uh, build a new town called Bradley Stoke. Now the and then there's going to be another, well, that's, that's already happened. And then a new development of another 1,200 homes has been built on land at Harry Stoke with a further 2,000 planned. Now, Harry Stoke is down here. And you can see this on page 180 of your textbook. And they're expanding the housing here. And it's a really good place in many ways because you're next to the station and so on so people can commute. There's some local objection though, and here you've really got a list of impacts you could use. You wouldn't need every single impact, and I would overlap it with the disadvantages of building on a greenfield site, which you've already done, so you don't need to learn things twice. So, but you could take any of these, maybe do two or three minimum, I'd say an absolute minimum of two, where you take the impact and explain it. How is it actually an impact? How does it work? So for example, the first one says increased congestion. So I've done a little example here for you. So, and the, the red words are the, are the bits where I'm explaining or assessing. So increased traffic congestion. If you build houses, this is explaining the impact. It means there's more people. So you see what I'm doing is explicitly saying why this traffic congestion is going to occur, resulting in more commuting. Commuting is a key word. It just means people, in this case, mainly um, traveling to work and back. You commute to school. So there's going to be these 2000 homes. Now I can put that in bold actually because it's specific. Added to Bradley Stokes, meaning 2000 households already um, using the busy roads and rail services. And this is assessing at the same time, a particular severe impact is the air pollution that affects health. Air pollution has been in the news a lot recently, and it's something which governments are trying to deal with because most of our cities are above what the EU would have put down as, as um, safe, things like nitrogen oxides. So this, this idea of air pollution, it's shortening people's lives and it's causing all sorts of problems in terms of respiration problems and, and, and other diseases and, and, and so on, even linked to things like cardiac arrest, but also noise pollution, and don't underestimate that even now with this current lockdown due to the uh, virus, the lack of noise pollution is really obvious uh, when all the traffic's died down. It's, right, and we've got away from this constant rumbling of cars. So that adds to congestion, increases stress and waste time as well. And we can get on to the commuter settlements in a bit. There's a little bit about that earlier, further down, which I'll come to. But what I'm trying to show you is all you need is to be able to ex really explicitly explain why and how it has an impact. Now, you can grab the uh, bits about the uh, Defence Procurement Agency, which is earlier in the textbook, um, if you wish to. If I just go back a little bit. Page um, 171. This defense procurement agency was built on the green belt. And like it says there, this has contributed to urban sprawl. And it's partly why Bradley Stoke had been built. And the idea being with this, that the housing development went with it, so all the workers could work there. And the balance to be had here is that's a major employer. It's good for the whole uh, country, really, because um, it brings income. 
and provides jobs and people pay tax to central government as well. If you're thinking about the national na- the national importance of Bristol, it employs people and these things do employ people. You could link it to migration earlier in the topic as well about national migration and how that um, that sort of installment there, where you've got all those extra jobs, encourage people to move to Bristol, but it provides jobs. It soaks up unemployment nationally as well. But one of the consequences is building on the green belt and contributing to urban sprawl. So how I would do this is to have at least one more, but probably have two small little paragraphs using, uh, let's get the right bit, using those bullet points we were looking at earlier, these, so impact and ecology, loss of open space, impacts on community services and so on, use any of those, you could tie it to flood risk and lag times like you've done before. More concrete surfaces means a shorter lag time and a higher peak discharge. If you don't fully understand that, go back and have a look at your rivers notes. We've done all about that and that means you only have to learn it once because you can easily explain that if you know your river stuff because you're going to need it for both. So if you end up with two or three key ideas, but the trick is to directly explain how whichever one you're doing actually causes an impact like we've done here, then you're done. And I'll constantly refer back to Bradley Stoke because it's the example which is is in Bristol and it's an easy example to grab and it's there listed in the textbook. Right. Just moving on, linked to this, if we just go back to the title, We've also got the growth of commuter settlements, and this is a very similar idea. You can nearly use the same point because these also cause traffic congestion. So commuter settlements is a place where people live and travel, but and travel el- el- from elsewhere for work. So they, they live in one place and they travel to work. I need to correct that slightly. So you live in one place like a village outside a city, then you travel into work. So the idea being with this is you've just got to look at the impact that's going to have. Now in the textbook on page 180, it talks about um, Watton. So if we, just in this paragraph here, because Bristol's important to the regional center. Again, that goes back to the, if you go back to your content sheet, the very first thing you did on Bristol, the importance of city, the city in the UK well, it's saying here, Bristol's importance as a regional centre means that many people travel from the surrounding areas. So people are travelling to Bristol for work. So you've got towns uh, south of the city, such as Watton, Under Edge and Clevedon and so on. So if we look at where those places are, this is Watton and this is Bristol. So if you look at the, the, the picture here, you can see it's a lovely little countryside um, area, little little village or town which is a little market town, but people like living in places like that because they get all the countryside and all the um, advantages of the open space and the clean air, but a well-paid job in Bristol, which is over here. So all we really need to do is then think about the impacts that might have. So if we think about traffic congestion again, you could nearly even name the roads if you now you can see the geography of this. But um, if you were just even to look at some of these roads, if I... Um, just grab the uh, Google Street View and put it on there. These roads, if there's enough people traveling into Bristol in rush hour, are going to get really congested. And then also it will add to traffic on the M5, or they may take different routes in down along the minor roads, but either way, it's going to add to congestion. So it might make it really straightforward this that you've already done one on traffic here for urban sprawl but equally if you mention a named little town like Watton under edge and you could talk about how the extra traffic put on the roads and then you could mention the m5 or whichever roads you want or just say where Watton is and then talk about air pollution and so on if you want as well you might want to look at this is a little video here it's only a small thing but it shows you how overcrowded the trains are in Bristol so the more commuters we've got, the busier the trains get. get. <clears throat> so if you can give two or three good impacts of the growth of commuter settlements, there's a list here you could to start you off, 
then um, you've done it, but you can overlap it with what you've already got. So by the end of this, you'll have quite similar points probably on the impact of urban sprawl on the rural urban fringe. So the impact it's having on those areas and the impact the growth of commuter settlements are having. So the, the commuter settlements and urban sprawl, which are very similar, except for the commuter settlements are small towns which are further out. And then the urban sprawl is a city growing outwards into the rural areas. But they both use of the countryside. They both threaten the ecology. They both threaten air pollution and so on. So there's a lot of overlaps. So you could hopefully for Bristol be able to just explain the impact of both of those, probably use very similar points, just have a few place names. So for rural urban fringe, you might have Bradley Stoke. And then for the commuter settlements, you might mention what on under edge and the rest of it is fairly straightforward then. So by the end of this, as long as you can give two impacts of each and name with something named within it, some of the figures that are given on the Google Docs, then you're done. Thank you.